Welcome back to Student Docs. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Carol Adrian, and today we have a powerful tool. Everybody wants to get a grant. I am a filmmaker who is grant funded, and we have, we're going to show you an amazing tool and the amazing person who's going to teach us how to use it. Uh, I want to start with two things, though, about getting a grant. One, Everybody thinks, oh, a grant, it's free money. Well, no, a grant is money you work for twice because writing a grant, it isn't easy, but it's certainly doable. But you really have to be as perfect and as well thought out as possible. For one thing, it really helps you structure your own project and the budget that goes with it. But for another, it makes you think through your process. But it is a lot of work. So you write the grant, you do all that work, hopefully you get awarded the grant, and then you do the work that you wrote the grant to pay yourself to do. So that is kind of important to know going in. And the second thing I just want to mention is that while there are, I believe, hundreds of thousands of grants available in this country, most of them go from a nonprofit to a nonprofit. When you see .org, it indicates that that organization is a nonprofit. There are grants available for individual artists who are not nonprofits, but they are far in the minority. If you can get a fiscal sponsor, that's really going to give you much wider access to a variety of grants. So I'm a filmmaker. My fiscal sponsor is the Greater Philadelphia Film Office. They're a .org. When I apply for a grant, if I am awarded that grant, the money actually goes to my fiscal sponsor, the film office. Then I submit what I need, the film office gives me the money, and they act as my bank with that grant money. So it's really a good idea to get a fiscal sponsor, and it is something that you can research where at the institution we're talking about, in Philadelphia, we have a remarkable free library system. Thank you, Benjamin Franklin. And within that remarkable system is another remarkable department called BRIC, the Business Resource and Innovation Center. And it houses many resources, but there is one where you can research available grants online from home for free. <laughs> and here to teach us about it, is Caitlin Seifritz. Caitlin is the nonprofit services supervisor at BRIC at the Free Library. And she has taught me several different versions over the years of using the foundation directory online. This is how to filter down to the organizations that will actually fund the specific kind of work that you are preparing to do. So, Caitlin, thank you so much. I'm going to turn the whole show over to you. And this, please watch if you've ever thought about getting a grant. This is going to up your odds like crazy. Go, Caitlin. Thanks. <laughs> thanks so much, Carol. So happy to be here today and to share this amazing resource with all of your viewers. Um, I'm going to get started today just by telling everyone a little bit more about the Regional Foundation Center, which is the nonprofit services portion of the BRIC Business Resource and Innovation Center. So we are a nonprofit resource center at the Free Library of Philadelphia, and we've actually been serving Philly's nonprofit community for almost 50 years. We do that by providing access to high quality research databases, free workshops, and one-on-one -on -one research appointments with librarians. So as Carol mentioned, we are part of the BRIC. Um, the BRIC, in addition to serving nonprofit professionals, also serves entrepreneurs, job seekers and inventors. And we opened a beautiful brand new space pictured here on the screen uh, back in April, 2019. So to get the most out of the Regional Foundation Center, you're gonna have to sign up for a free library card. You can sign up for one online or by visiting your closest neighborhood library. And what a lot of people don't realize is that anyone who lives in Pennsylvania can sign up for a free library card for free. 
And in addition to the resources that I will be talking about today, your free library card also gets you access to resources to help you learn a new skill or a new language, access news sources like the Philadelphia Inquirer and the New York Times, plus of course, access to thousands of eBooks. So our funding resources are applicable to nonprofits, fiscally sponsored organizations and individual artists and creatives. And once you've learned the basics of our tools, then you can apply these skills to a number of projects and organizations. But today we'll be focusing on films and filmmakers. So everything I will be covering today, um, and there's a lot, um, will be detailed in our funding resource guide for filmmakers. Um, so this guide can be accessed by going to the link um, on the screen here. So before you begin researching funding opportunities, it's really important to first articulate what your funding needs are. So you'll want to first start by asking yourself the following questions. What are you trying to accomplish? In what stage of the project are you presently involved? How are you going to accomplish it? How long will it take? Who will benefit from it? How much will you need? And what type of support do you need? So answers to these questions will not only help you begin to identify your funding needs, but it'll also help set the stage for writing grant proposals. Once you've identified your needs, you can begin to research funding opportunities. Today, I'm gonna to demonstrate a resource called Foundation Directory Online or FDO. FDO allows you to search grant makers and see their giving priorities. This powerful tool saves you from approaching funders that are not a good fit for your needs and provides a comprehensive resource for creating a list of potential targets. FDO also includes information on how to apply for a grant with a funder, their financials, and contact information. The data available in FDO are being pulled from a variety of sources, including grantmaker websites, annual reports, news articles, and funder 990s. 990s are the financial documents that funders must submit to the IRS every year, and they actually list out all the grants they gave during that fiscal year. So they have a lot of great information, who they gave the grant to, how much the grant was for, and the purpose of the grant. Do keep in mind that FDO really is geared towards organizations that have 501c3 status or are working with a fiscal sponsor. So to get the most out of the grant opportunities out there, it is recommended that you work with a fiscal sponsor, like Carol mentioned just a moment ago. FDO is available for free through the free library with your library card. Using the answers to the questions regarding your funding needs, you can start to develop a search strategy. Start by listing out all the ways you can describe your project. Think beyond the basics like film or media, and instead think about who your audience is or whose story you're trying to tell. What is your message? When you use Foundation Directory Online, you will need to search by keyword using the following categories, subject, population, and geographic focus. Subject refers to the primary focus of your work. You may have several subject terms. Some examples include film and video, climate change, social justice, public health, or community organizing. The population refers to whose story you're highlighting or your intended audience. For example, women, people with disabilities, transgender people, or activists. Geographic focus can be a little tricky for individuals in film and media, since you may hope to have a wider audience that isn't tied to a specific geography. But I would start locally and research funders who are going to be interested to tell the story of their community. Or if your film features a specific place, try researching funders interested in funding that geographic area. To help you figure out what search terms to use, you can check out the website taxonomy.candid.org, which offers a list of available search terms and definitions of those search terms. There are two versions of Foundation Directory Online, professional and essential. I've listed out the major differences between the two here. The professional version gives you access not just to funder profiles, but past grants as well as recipient information. Professional is available on site at the Parkway Central Library. 
Essential is a pared down version of professional. And while it doesn't give you access to past grants or recipient details, it's a great starting point for researching funders that may wanna support your project. Essential is available remotely with your free library card. To use FDO Essential, you will need to create a free account on the FDO website. Once you signed up, you will have unlimited access for 24 hours. After your 24 hours expires, you can reactivate your day pass after 30 days. If you don't live in Philadelphia, you can also get on-site access to FDO Professional at the, at the Montgomery County Community College, the Chester County Public Library, and the Grundy Library in Bristol. So today I will be doing a demonstration of FDO Essential to show you all how you can run a search using this powerful tool. So I'm now on the homepage of Foundation Directory Online Essential. <clears throat> I recommend using the advanced search and filters. Um, you can get to those by clicking on this link uh, just above the search box. Once I've done that, you will see the different search boxes that will allow us to build our search. So the first search box we're gonna use is subject area. So again, this describes the work that you're doing or what you're looking to get funding for. When you click in that search box, you will get a drop down list of the search terms available to you. You'll notice that these are very broad general categories. And if we were to search for one of these categories, we'd probably get hundreds if not thousands of results. So I recommend looking for a more specific search term to describe what you need funding for. So if we're looking to find funders who are interested in funding film and video, we'd find that under the information and communication section, and then within the communication media section. I'm gonna put a check mark next to film and video, and that search term is now added to the subject area search box. Next, we'll add a geographic focus, so where the funding will be used. So for this search box, we can put in a city, a county, a region, or a state. So for our purposes today, I'm gonna to put in the Delaware Valley region, which will encompass Philadelphia, the surrounding counties, Camden, as well as Wilmington. So I started typing in Delaware and Delaware Valley region uh, showed up first on my list. So I'm gonna add that to my search. Population served allows us to include a population that is maybe featured in our project or um, who were the audience that we're trying to reach. So with populations, you can see that we can include things like age groups, ethnic and racial groups, health, social and economic status. And just like with the subject areas, each of these uh, can um, drill down into more specific search terms. For our purposes today, I'm gonna leave population serve blank. I'm really just interested to kind of get a sense of the general field of funders interested in funding film and video. The next search box we have is organization name. This is a great search box to use if you already know the name of a funder, but you'd like to see what their profile is or looks like in Foundation Directory Online. So you can start by typing in the name of a funder, for example, the William Penn Foundation. And once you've typed in their name, you can click on this arrow and you can go directly to that organization's profile. People often confuse location and geographic focus. So I do wanna explain the difference between the two. The location just refers to where a grant maker is physically based. It's essentially what their mailing address is. So a funder may be physically based in New York, but if they're interested in giving to the Delaware Valley region, they're gonna show up on our list because we included the Delaware Valley region in our geographic focus. But if we put the Delaware Valley region in our location box here, it would filter out that funder who's based in New York. So I recommend just using geographic focus and not putting anything into the location box. The who's who box can be really useful if you want to see if any of your contacts or anyone in your network is associated with a foundation. You can type their name in here and see if they're a board member or a staff member at a foundation. Under additional filters, we have a few other options we can use to build our search. 
Support strategy allows us to include the type of support we're looking for. Things like equipment, seed money, uh, money for productions or presentations. You'll find those options here in support strategy. This grant amount slider bar can be really useful if you have a specific dollar amount or range in mind that you're looking for for your particular project. You can set these limits and the search results that are returned to you um, will reflect funders that give grants within those parameters. Another thing that is useful for your search is this year's slider bar here. So if a funder gave a grant in 2003 for film and video in the Delaware Valley region, they're gonna show up on our list. But at this point, that grant is almost 20 years old. So it's not super relevant to us. So if we wanna look at funders who have given to film and video more recently than that, then we can change our dates here to look at more recent information. So I'm gonna change ours to look at funders who have supported film and video within the last five to six years. Do keep in mind that the information in here um, may be slightly delayed because we are relying on those funder 990s. Um, so we may only have up-to-date information on a funder from 2018 or 2019. Um, so I'd give yourself a little bit of a buffer. So that's how we build our search and foundation directory online. Really the most important things to include in your search are going to be subject area and geographic focus. So I'm going to click search now and I will talk us through our search results and then we'll look at a funder's profile. So we can see that there are 161 grant makers that meet our search criteria. That is funders who are interested in supporting film and video in the Delaware Valley region within the last six years. You'll notice that our next two sections of search results, grants and recipients are grayed out. And when I hover over them, it says upgrade now. Those are the search results that you'd be able to view if you were using the professional version on site at the Parkway Central Library. But as I mentioned before, using the grant makers is a great way to get a prospect list started. So the first five grant makers that meet our search criteria show up on the list here. I recommend clicking this blue view all button though to see the full list. Once we've done that, we'll be able to see additional filters that will help us find funders that are going to be the best match for us. So in this grant makers filters box, we have the option to exclude grant makers that are not accepting applications. Now that doesn't mean that they had a deadline of August 1st and that's now passed. It just means that they have some kind of closed process. They either pre-select who they're giving to or it's by invitation only. It doesn't mean that those grant makers are never going to give to you, but it usually means that you have to do some other type of work up front before they'll accept a grant proposal from you. So if you'd like to exclude those funders, you can do that by putting a check in this box. So we started with 161 grant makers and our list dropped down to 64 grant makers. So for now, we may wanna focus in on those funders that are accepting applications. And then once we've gone through this list, we may wanna reevaluate um, those funders uh, that don't accept applications. So I'm gonna uh, briefly describe how this list is sorted and then I'll open up a funders profile. So on our list here, we can see the grant maker's name, the city and state where they're located, the next two columns are coming from the last 990 we have on record for the grant maker and are telling us essentially how much money they had that fiscal year and how much of that money they gave away. Foundations are required by the IRS to give away at least 5% of their prior year's assets. So they must give away their money. The next two columns are much more relevant to us though because they are geared to our specific search. So. We set our search parameters to 2015 to 2021. 20, uh, so within that time frame, each of these funders, um, we can see how much each of these funders has given to film and video in the Delaware Valley region and how many grants they've given for film and video in the Delaware Valley region. 
So the list is sorted by grant count. So the Philadelphia Foundation gave away the most grants, but you'll notice a little further down that the Ford Foundation actually gave away more money. Um, and you can resort your list by any of these other headers. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Philadelphia Foundation's profile since they're top of our list. And then I'll walk you through the type of information that you can find in the profile. First thing I'll note is when uh, the profile was last updated. So pretty recently. We can also see when their grant information was last updated. You'll also notice this symbol, e-grant reporter. This is letting us know that this funder is submitting their grants details to Foundation Director Online before their 990 is coming out. So we're gonna see more up-to-date information. The first section of a funder's profile is gonna give you the last five years of giving at a glance. So these charts just give you a better sense of what this funder has supported in the last five years. The first chart shows us the top 10 categories that this funder has supported. So film and video falls under information and communications. And within the last five years, the Philadelphia Foundation has given a little over $4 million to that category. If your film or project falls into any of these other categories, it's really helpful to look and see how much money that funder has given to these other subjects as well. The next chart is showing us where that money is going. So this can be useful if you're looking to have a wider audience or reach funders who are interested in funding multiple states. This map can give you a general sense of where else in the country this funder is funding besides Pennsylvania. And you can move your mouse to any state and see the number of grants, the number of recipients, and the total amount funded in that state. The last chart is giving us a sense of how large the grants are this funder typically gives out. You can move your mouse to any of these bars and you can see how many grants they gave in each of these ranges. This can be helpful for trying to figure out how much you should ask for from a funder or how much you could expect to get from a funder. The next section of the profile is their funding interest. So this is going to list out all the different subjects, population groups, support strategies that this funder is interested in supporting. We then have about the funder. So this is going to give a little background, a mission statement. Sometimes they'll also identify uh, specific program areas that are of interest to them. Next, we have other funders to consider. These funders may also want to give to your organization based on similar patterns of giving. And you can click on any of their names to be taken to their profiles. We then have the application section. So this is going to go into detail about how to apply for a grant with this particular funder. It's going to list out any specific documentation you'll have to uh, supply, what the initial approach should be, when the board meets, if there's any specific deadlines, and when the final notification is. Also in this section is giving limitations. So in this box, you'll find geographic limitations as well as things that this funder does not support. So you always wanna look at this box and make sure nothing counts you out. We then have financial information for the funder. So you can see a very quick snapshot um, of their financials. And then if you wanted to look at their most recent 990s, you can do that here. Um, as a reminder, those 990s do list out all the grants that funder gave out during that fiscal year. So they can be really useful for researching whether a funder has supported similar projects in the past. Next, we have who's who, which will list out any board members or staff members associated with this organization. It's really great to take a look at this, see if you know anyone at that organization or you can maybe share this list with your, um, with your contacts, your network, see if anyone can make an introduction for you. Next up is communications. This is a great way to see what's currently going on with this particular funder. It's gonna list out any philanthropic news articles about the funder, as well as social media pages, uh, publications associated with this funder. And then at the bottom of the page, we have their contact information. So their mailing address, phone number, 
email, as well as their website. I always recommend checking the funder's website for the most up-to-date information. But do keep in mind that only about 10% of foundations actually have websites. So that's why using Foundation Director Online to start your search and create a prospect list is a really great place to start. So I do want to take a moment to show you a couple of other features that might be useful to you while you're using Foundation Director Online. Back up at the top of the page, you can download a PDF version of this profile and save it to your computer, and you can access that at any time. So because you only have that 24-hour day pass access to the essential version, this can be really useful if you want to access this information after your day pass expires. You can also email yourself or anyone else a PDF version of um, this profile. And if I go back to our search results page, I'll show you how you can uh, download a batch of profiles um, at once so you can get a lot of information um, all at once. So you can download up to 10 profiles at a time by clicking the check boxes next to the first 10 funders that you'd like to include in your download. And then you can hit the PDF button and say you want to save the profiles. That will generate a PDF, one PDF of all the profiles uh, that you want that you selected. If you have any questions about using Foundation Directory Online, I want to point out some places where you can get assistance. First, under the Help section in the upper right corner, there's an FDO Guide and FAQ section. The FDO Guide is great for answering questions about how to build a better search, and how to um, interpret your search results. If you click on any of these sections, you're going to get a lot of great tips um, related to that topic, as well as video tutorials uh, to help you get the most out of using Foundation Directory Online. You can also use the chat feature um, and chat with uh, a librarian at Candid. They're also um, happy to help you with any questions you have about using Foundation Directory Online. Um, so that's a very brief overview of how to run a search in Foundation Directory Online. Um, but I do want to just briefly show you um, the resource guide that I mentioned earlier on. Um, so in that resource guide, I lay out lots of information about your funding needs. I've included some information about fiscal sponsorship as well as a list of both local and national fiscal sponsors. And then on the second page, I list out information on where you can find funding. And in this section, under Library Resources, you'll see Foundation Directory Online. And if you click on that, I've created a whole document um, specific to using Foundation Directory Online to search for uh, funding opportunities um, for films or filmmakers. Um, it explains everything about the difference between professional and essential, as well as how to access Foundation Directory Online remotely. Also in your resource guide um, is a list of local resources and funders, as well as national resources and funders. Um, so this is a resource guide that we will be updating you know, pretty regularly if links go out of date um, if we learn about new resources. So lastly, I just wanted to share our contact information. Um, so if anyone has any questions um, and would like to get in touch with myself or the Regional Foundation Center, then you can do that by sending us an email, checking out our website, signing up for our newsletter, um, or again, there's the link to the resource guide as well. Caitlin, there is no better introduction, I think, for grant seekers than what you just put out there. Thank you so much. And it's great people are gonna be able to watch this more than once to go to these resources. Mic drop, <laughs> what a great job. Thank you so much. And please join us next time on Student Docs.